because only six points separate the six gloves embroiled in a fight for survival. It's Aberdeen in all red who begin what is usually when these two meet a magnificent match. Even if Aberdeen have had to patch things up a bit, there's one week you don't want a flu bug through the camp, it's the week you're playing Celtic. Way by Tosh McKinley back in the side with the Frenchman Stefan Mahi injured. I think already we, we can see that Paul Lambert is going to pick up Eon Jess, no surprise there. Here is Jess. Paducah. Lambert. Now Burley. Under pressure from Mike Mule. Good challenge. Here's Jamie Buchan. With support from Jess. And the youngster, Michael Hart. That was met by Mialbi. Hart. So Aberdeen would like to spend most of the first half in this half of the field. But that might change now. Then again, perhaps not. Celtic, incidentally, seeking their 100th league win over Aberdeen today. Perry. Rode the challenge of McKinley, but then in came Lambert. McKinley looking to put Henrik Larsson away. Here is Larsson. And the challenge by Derek White, free kick. What a good early ball it is. Tosh McKinley back to front, in behind Derek White there. And Larsson's first touch just let him down. Otherwise, he was in and Derek Stilley. Derek White in a desperate situation here. And he takes Larsson. It's the real chance even this early in the game. Celtic, of course, still without their skillful Slovakian Lubo Moravcic. He's likely to return next week. He might have fancied this one. As it is, it's going to be Henrik Larsson! And it's not far off its intended target. Well, he did this to Aberdeen at Celtic Park. Earlier on in the season, there's plenty of pace in it. Just doesn't dip quickly enough for him. But he's one of the best in the business at this. Just doesn't come down from. And it's a relief, Derek Stilley that watched it finish just over the target. Mialbi's header. Burley, looking to return it to Viduka, but Andy Dow was in the way. Give us some challenge from McNamara, and it could set something up for Celtic here. Demara, who's just recovered from a chest infection, just kept him out of that cup game at Morton, stopped in his tracks. And the white. Lambert moving away from Buckham. McNamara, there's a man on, but there are two men on him. And he gets the free kick. Mike Newell lunges in. Well, he said to the referee, I took the ball. Former Blackburn man who won a championship medal at Ewood Park. Played for a few clubs, of course, in his career. McKinley. Mialbi. Here's Bidar Recep, who... Uh, certainly defines a utility player. He's actually played in every position bar goalkeeper throughout his career. Back in the back three today in the absence of Stubbs. Richie Blinker, who scored a nightmare own goal here back in August. Hart slid in. No surprise, but it's a frantic start between Aberdeen and Celtic. Yeah, I think Aberdeen have shown already that they're, they're not going to stand back and admire Celtic. And they have to press the game from the front to back the way if they have any chance here tonight. If they give Celtic space, I, I would think that Joseph Engloss' side will pass him off the pitch. 
be Dow. Over the top for Winchester Chase. Reset knew he was there. And he's got the free kick as Winters. Powered by Reset. And many times when you don't see that given. Well, it looked like a lost cause here, Robbie. Winters was prepared to chase it. And Reset does hold him off. Certainly a case of obstruction, if nothing else. Well, this could be useful for Aberdeen. Chess to take the free kick. White amongst those jostling for position. Drilled in by Jess. Away by McNamara. The Albies clearance. Aberdeen giving it a real go right from the start. Dow finding Newell. Away by McKinley. Smith. Here's Hart. Jess. Being exuding confidence at the moment. Here's Hart. Away by Reset. Perry. Winters is there. And so is Bucken. Newell setting it up for Perry, who scored a stunner against Celtic here back in August, but uh, not that time, that's for sure. Yeah, it was a complete miscue, but uh, Aberdeen showing uh, encouraging signs here early on. Knocking the ball about well, patiently probing until they get a, a shooting opportunity. Not one that Mark Perry would be proud of. Well, Aberdeen have not won both home games against Celtic since the start of the decade, the 1991 season. Well, they would love to do the double this season. Derek White up against his former club. Smith. Winters with a rather forlorn chase. Been out for a couple of games. Robbie Winters came to Aberdeen. It's part of the deal that took Billy Dodds to Dundee United. Yeah, I think it's a good mix that Aberdeen have up front because uh, Newell will win his fair share in the air. And this is a man to be in the end of any of the knockdowns. and got a slight nudge on it. Much firmer from the Albi. Chess one there. Tosh McKinley. 34 years of age now and had a contract. Certain to be leaving Celtic at the end of the season. The Duke has been penalised this time. The giant Aussie. Dow. White. Given to Jess again. Winters. Sending off Boyd. Jess doing likewise to Blinker. Boyd's header. And to touch by McNamara. The Dean will be pretty happy with the way things have started. Winters. Did well to get his cross in. Showed some silky skills there. Yeah, it's a good ball in from Robbie Winters. Just a, a fraction too deep for Mike Newell, who taken up position at the back post. Here's Newell. Oh, look, the little back heel from Wyness. Winters is crowded out, and here's Jackie McNamara. Last him available. Till he goes Larson. Now Burley. Celtic sweeping forward. Blinker. 
Lambert up towards Larson. He's back to goal, but that rarely matters as far as Henrik Larson is concerned. Yeah, he did well to turn away from Derek White to make some space in the first place. He's played in, Derek White's in a good position. And he gets a bit too tight on Larson, who spins away from him. Can't get over the shot. But Larson wants you in tight because he's so good at turning defenders. A little warning there for Derek White. He really has been awesome this season, Henrik Larson. just about marshalled that one out of play and was fouled in the process with the younger sides Neil. I think that's going to be a decent contest Neil against Mielby and Joseph Engloss will be hoping that uh, this man isn't as rash as he was at Greenock last week and it's a big part of his game the, the physical presence but he's going to have to channel it a bit more positively here's a reset Charles had a play by Jamie Bucket. He said the Norwegian international. Dennis Wyness opening up possibilities for Aberdeen here. Jess is down. Down continued on the overlap. Sadly, the delivery put him down somewhat. Yeah, it's a poor ball. And it was a, a good chance for Andy Dow to put Celtic under pressure here. Good overlapping run here. And the weight of the, the ball is perfect to into his feet. And he can't put it into the right area. Paul Haggerty, the, the team were bottom when he took charge in December. They're now fifth in the table. It's going to be a Celtic throw. Paduka. Burley to Lambert. Boyd. McNamara. Passing games between them, and they get the throw. Larson, and he's got the corner. Yeah, I think he played for it as well. There's not a chance of getting a cross in, so played it off Derek White to get the corner. An up goal reset and we all be into that back post area. Stillian Coke will be more than aware of the presence of Mialbi. I think his corner has drifted over everybody. It's retrieved by Jackie McNamara. Who will try again? Still he comes and he's got that range. Yeah, he took it at the second attempt, but he was positive enough to come for it in the first place as Aberdeen break. And it was kept in play, but Reset was able to nudge it back to his keeper. Credit to Hart, though, for getting there in the first place. It didn't look like he would initially. A side flag's gone up now. Celtic have won eight games in a row. They're going to have to continue in that vein. That was a shocker from uh, Reset. Anywhere near McKinley. Jess. Full header from Hart. Lambert. Pumped up towards the front two. Put away by Smith. And then by Dow. Then by Wyness. Celtic's 3 2 defeat here in August was their first loss in 13 Premier League meetings with Aberdeen. Indeed, 
it's a fixture in recent times they've usually won. Here's Larson. It's across. He's met by Gary Smith. Shanked by Recess straight to Hart. Bucken. Perry. Ricochet favoured Blinker. Now Viduka. Yes, well done, Gary Smith. Aberdeen. Terry. Winters. Nearly into the path of McKinley. Offside against Henrik Larsson. Yeah, very tight one as well, I would suggest. Once again, Aberdeen have pushed up. Toss McKinley looking for the ball over the top. And he's well onside there. It's a danger for Aberdeen if they want to push up and try and squeeze the game. The ball in behind. Boy. The Duca. He was caught by Derek White. Well, both Gary Smith and Derek White uh, have made it perfectly clear to, to Mark Viduka tonight that uh, he's going to have to win a physical battle. Yes, welcome to Pitodri. Here's McKinley. Lambert. Now Blinker. Still Blinker. Jess has stuck with him. And it stayed in. Wait by White to Winters. Shaking off Boyd. There's only the real rhythm at the moment, but others are arriving in support. Winters really getting the crowd going then. It's a corner. A good contest there, two of the quickest men in the game. Winters comes inside Tom Boyd here, then checks back out. And it's a good saving tackle here, good block here by Tom Boyd. It's a corner for Aberdeen. Sent in by Jess. Ooh. It's going to come to Hart. Almost had too much time on his hands then. That's going to disappear over the head of Ian Jess. But what a vicious corner he whipped in here. Yeah, it certainly was. It broke into Paul Lambert's laugh at the end of the, the day. He didn't know much about it. But he managed to get it away nevertheless. Good ball in though. to lose in 1999 12 games unbeaten the last defeat was at Hearts in December but they knew they were in for a testing trip coming to Aberdeen away by Boyd Jess unable to control it that time Celtic wasting no time Here's Hart. And he got his cross in towards Newell. Now Dennis Wynas. But Jackie McNamara gets the better of him. And Newell got a knock on the head. And Mialbi, that is a nasty one for the big Swede, Mialbi. No, we don't like to see that. The ball from Michael Hart uh, delivered into a decent area. It's the left elbow of Mike Newell that catches Johan Mjalbi. And he'll be off for a few stitches, I would think. Newell appears to be OK, but Mjalbi definitely isn't. Yeah, there's no doubt who took the second prize. It's the, it's the big sweep. Decent ball in. Mialbi has gone down the tunnel to get some treatment. Yeah, I think they want to give him as much time as possible. If they can, stitch the wound up and get him back on. They, they certainly will, looking at this uh, very inexperienced Celtic bench. They want Mialbi back on that pitch as soon as possible. Bucken, snuffed out by Burley. Lambert. 
Teresa. There was a late challenge by Newell there, and the referee just had a quick word with him. It was Newell who caught the Albi. McKinley offside against Henry Glasson, and that looks a little more likely. Yeah, it's a big space, so Aberdeen are leaving for Larson to run into. It's the chance that they have to take, I suppose, to, to get pushed up. And he's certainly offside on that occasion. Leaving a big hole in there for, for Celtic to drop the ball into. Up and under from Boyd. Larson to Viduka. He's got Blinker to his left, but Hart getting back. There was some tussle between the two then. Well, Young Hart did ever so well with the defensive run to match Blinker. I think he's pushing him at the end there. But he must have come back 30, 40 yards to, to match the run made from Blinker. And the two white players have done well. The two youngsters for, for Paul Hegarty so far this evening have done very well. Michael Hart making only his second start in the Scottish Premier League this season. Henrik Larsson. Celtic temporarily down to 10 men, remember. With Mialvi getting treatments. And they'll miss him from this corner. Celtic nudging ahead on the corner count. No goals with almost a quarter of the game gone. So no Mialvi for this corner. It didn't matter anyway because Richie Blink. Went and did that, and that's been sent out of the ground by uh, Michael Hutt. New balls, please. Information that Johan Mialbi is receiving stitches, but he's coming out. And he's going to come back on. It'll take more than a few stitches to stop this man, you feel. He doesn't even need the Terry Butcher headband. <laughs> Blinker's corner, a little better this time, on by Recep. Scrambled away. Oh, what a good corner this is from Reggie Blinker. Made a hash of the first corner, but he made up for it. That's a great delivery. Derek Stilly all over the place there. And it was Recep at the front post to get the touch on. He's only had the one stitch, I'm told. Johan Mialbi looked like he might have needed a few more than that. McNamara's cross. Here's Blinker. Now a chance for Aberdeen with Winters. Wyness is calling for it and he's going to get it. And Dow is about to pass him on the overlap, but he won't need him. A challenge by McNamara. Calling in Wyness. Paducah. Blinker, McKinley, the feeling Celtic are getting into their stride as McKinley looks for Larson, but it's straight to Stilly. Yeah, once again he tried to drop it just in behind Gary Smith and Derek White. And it was good goalkeeping by Derek Stilly, he really had to play as a sweeper there. Aberdeen have won just four of their 12 games in the league here this season. They have one draw, one four, drawn four, and lost four. One of those columns will change today. McKinley. Lambert. Burley. Lambert looking for Larson this time and finding him. Viduka. Drops it down for Blinker. McKinley to his left, but he's gone to his right. And Craig Burley. Paducah. Just brushed away by Gary Smith. Now Jess. Very calm, even on the edge of his own box. 
Well, I think if you've got his kind of ability and you're quite happy to take it in, in any area of the pitch. Rusev settling for touch. Newell. Offside against Robbie Winters. Well, so far so good for Aberdeen. Certainly no signs of them, them being overrun here tonight. They've had more of the ball. Haven't managed to make it count yet, but uh, pretty sure this man will be well pleased with the way his side. It has to be remembered that it's a makeshift Aberdeen side tonight, but they really have coped well so far. Here's Larson. Looking to poke it through to Viduka, and it was nudged behind for a corner by Andy Dow. Good challenge, and it had to be. Larson holds it up here, looking for a run up, and he gets it from Viduka, and Andy Dow did well. And the last corner presented a problem or two to Aberdeen. This time it's short ish to Hendrik Larson. And I think they want the corner taken again by Reggie Blinker. OK, then, he will. It's the long first time. Yarby back in there as well. And it's in! Crowd of heads went up. And Viduka is claiming another goal for Celtic. Such a difficult ball to defend, it's whipped in there from Blinker. Derek Stilley comes, and on reflection he perhaps should have stayed, but it's a good delivery, there's plenty of pace on it. Viduka, so much traffic in that area, but he's got such a physical presence, he's up, he's dominating, he brushes the challenges off, and Andy Dow on the line just can't do enough to keep it out. His third goal in two games, Mark Viduka. He's becoming an instant hero with the Celtic fans. There was a day when they thought that might not be possible. So Celtic having weathered a kind of a storm from Aberdeen early on. Or a goal up. Yeah, I think on reflection Derek Stilley will wish that he did stayed in his line his winters though poked across in the direction of Newell but the giant frame of Mialbi was in the way and there's the goal again and there's plenty of protection in front of Stilly he doesn't really have to come for it and he's left in no man's land he played against Celtic in the Champions League qualifier right at the start of the season, Mark Viduka. But it took them a heck of a long time to track him down and complete the transfer saga. Then there was the commotion of the walkout related to stress. But he looks like he's okay now. White. Wynes for Newell. Wynes, and he's picked out Mike Newell here. He plays the handball. Not given. A massive handball cry from Aberdeen then. Well, Willie Young gave uh, three penalties in this game. And the two met in August. If I remember correctly, there should have been a fourth as well. Here's McKinley. Lambert. Way by White. Newell is going to get another warning. He's certainly putting himself about. Yeah, it's been coming though, and here's the contentious penalty claim. Newell had taken up good position here, tries to cut it back. It certainly plays Mialbe on the left hand. But whether it's intentional is a different matter, although we certainly have seen them given for less than that. As Melby's left hand goes to ground, he certainly plays the ball with his left hand, there's no question about that. And Celtic get off the hook there. 
Newell's picked up a yellow card. Celtic have a free kick. It's McKinley. Lambert. Oh, he sold Boyd a little short. Boyd survives and finds Henry Glasson, who's quickly met by Derek White. And he in turn is fouled by McNamara. So Mike Newell has got the first yellow card of this game after receiving a couple of warnings. Dow. Jess. Hart. Helped it on to Jamie Buchan. And Lambert's going to concede the corner. Lambert, of course, in the European Cup. Early in his career with Borussia Dortmund. Jesse's corner. That was away by a reset. Larson. Dispossessed. Bucket and Aberdeen are in trouble here, although Larson's first touch allowed Gary Smith to slam it away. Yeah, just showed too much of it to Gary Smith there. The first touch, unusually for Henrik Larson, letting him down. And Smith's had a sound match there at the back for Aberdeen so far. Reset. straight through to Derek Stilling. Now Winters is going to latch on to this. With a rather tame effort, he had to go for goal himself, there was nobody up there with him. Bucket. White. Newell and Mialbi together again, and Mialbi penalised. And Aberdeen free kick. Yeah, the Adams were up once again. We saw too much of this at Greenock last week for me. And once again, he's leaning all over Mike Newell. And this is a chance of Julian Jess will fancy this, it's just his range. Indeed, Jess sizing it up. It's not a wall, we'll have to get it back a little yet. Jess produced something special. Not really. Wyness tries. So does Bucket. Disappointing outcome. Much ado about nothing. Yeah, it's a decent chance for you on Jess. He's normally very good in this situation. Just can't get the ball up quickly enough. Viduka to Larson, but away by White. McKinley. Larson. Bars out of the way by White. Jess. And here's Wyness. And there's something on for Aberdeen here. Wyness is cross. Away by Risa. Duca did well to keep that in, and he's found McKinley, who has a man on. The Duca, scorer of Celtic's goal. Burley. Mialbi. Away by Smith. Aberdeen have the second worst defence in the Scottish Premier League. 44 goals conceded now. Dundee have let in 45.
McKinley towards the target man, Baduka. Here's Hart. will give Aberdeen a free kick. And he's seeing a lot of the ball in that position, Ewan Jess. I think Paul Hegarty would like to see him further forward, though. Misunderstanding between Perry and Hart. Well, this week on Sky Sports 3, we'll have highlights for you of the FA Cup quarter final between Barnsley and Tottenham. Snowed off the other day. It should be all right for Tuesday night at Oakwell. Highlights from 10 o'clock. Former Aberdeen man Craig Hignett. No doubt lining up for Barnsley in that one. Lambert leaves it for Burley. Here's McKinley, who just took his arm the ball. We've all done that from time to time, Ian. Felt rather foolish about it. Winters. Dow. Derek White has spent seven years with Celtic. Over the top here for Winters. Just went away from him. Here's Dow. Well, it's... Uh, it's pretty level, I think we could safely say. Yeah, you do get the impression that Celtic are starting to, to take a grip on the game. And once they do go ahead, Celtic these days, you, you very often see Burnley and Lambert too, who are some of the best in the business at keeping the ball. They, they just won't give it away. They'll play away patiently and wait until they get another opening. Brinker. Newell to Hart. Winters turning me Albi. Really looking lively. Now Jess. Dow's cross. Newell's header. Glance towards goal, but not really troubling. Jonathan Gould. Henrik Larsson. by Wyness and fouled by Wyness. Yeah, once again the youngsters working back, but uh, missed time to tackle completely. Wasn't too to amused about it. <laughs> McNamara's free kick. Burley's header. And Larson, and it was scrambled behind by Derek Stilley for a corner. Well, they're winning too much in the air, I think, for Paul Hegarty's liking at the moment, Celtic. They win the first ball and the second there. It's a deep, hopeful one from Jackie McNamara. Knocked across the face of the goal by Craig Burley, and Larson was in the end of it. Polinko with Celtic's fifth corner, they scored. And one on that side through Mark Viduka. Here's Hart. Andy Dow. Aberdeen have won two of their last three games, but they will find themselves faced with a real relegation battle along with five other clubs in Scotland's top flight. Here's Larson. Oh, it was just nipped off his toes by Bucket. Perry, Newell. Newell be paying him close attention as usual. Now Burley. Burley studying the various options and not really picking the right one. 
bucket. It's going to run from Winters. Reset has gone with him. Free kick. Yeah, Winters did make a good run into the corner there, trying to check back, looking for support and taken by Vida Reset, who's had a, another good game tonight, clearly playing out of position, but he has done well when asked to play in that central defensive role. Wine is standing over this free kick. Met by Mialbi. Why is he not too bothered by that stitches? in his head and Swedish international McKinley for Duca not sure what the plan was there I don't think Tosh McKinley does either yeah, I think he was looking for a runner there, there was no movement in front of him, that's why he had to play it into Viduka's feet. Joe Venglos in charge of Celtic for the 39th time, hoping for a 22nd win. That was Nathan Bucket, his Neil. Now Hart. Took a little deflection. Off McKinley on his way into the box. Perry. Hart. Looking for Perry. But McKinley always looked like he would get there. And Julie did. Winters. Winters trying to give Mialbi the run around. He looked for Newell. Who shielded reset from it. Celtic not messing around as they go up the other end. McNamara offside. Had a bit against Henrik Larsson. Yeah, he's not happy about it, but he's clearly a yard offside and he wanted to play it earlier, that's why he's so frustrated. Downs free kick towards Newell. Cleared by Boyd. White. It's the 48th meeting at the Todry between these teams since the Scottish Premier was formed in the mid 70s. Aberdeen have won more, 17 to Celtic's 14, 16 draws. Always a tight tussle. Reset. He's done well, reset. And he still has a big part to play in this attack. Sending McKinley away. Towards Larson. Steered away by, uh, by White. Half time fast approaching. Blinker. Foul by Reggie Blinker on Michael Hart. Yeah, it's a forwards challenge this one. And he's lucky he doesn't get a yellow card there because he's nowhere near getting the ball there. A bit of pushing and pulling. And Willie Young was right up with the play. Having a word with Blinker just now. Hidal Reset is getting treatment at the moment as well. And he's got the physio on. So there's a slight delay in the action here. Reset, who had that burst from the back, out of the back, a few moments ago. Celtic leading through a goal from that man, Viduka. Yes, yeah, a super ball in from Reggie Blinker here. Viduka's under pressure, so many bodies in that area. The physical presence made all the difference. Eric still had come and found himself in no man's land. Oh, 
two goals at Morton last Monday. Albeit if one of them was rather fortuitous as it went in off his heel. From Henry Glasson's shot. Well, he says OK. And there he is, just to prove it. Lambert, ooh! Almost made a rare mistake. He recovered, but here's Perry. Now Jess. And Winters is in there, but we said clears. Bucket. Perry. Now Mike Newell drilled it over. Had to take it first time. He was being closed down by Tosh McKinley. And he had to take it early here. See Tosh McKinley coming to close him down. And then he had to snatch at it and he didn't get over it. Joined Aberdeen from Birmingham a couple of years back. Perry. Funny heart. Here's Paducah. Strong lad, that's for sure. Paducah. Yeah, he can look after himself, and he does give Celtic an option they haven't had in years. An out and out target man. He's obviously good and can take it into feet as well. And there's no time to take the free kick, and Mark Paducah's goal separates the side to the moment. Paducah with his third goal in two starts for Celtic. The Australian international. Cost three million pounds from Croatia Zagreb. So it will be Celtic who start the second half. They've found themselves 13 points behind Rangers again in the race for the title. They simply cannot afford any sort of slip up. It's got to be victories all the way, which might seem like a tall order, but they have managed eight wins on the spin. There's a bit of work left in this match for Celtic to do as well, Ian. I don't think they've played particularly well. I find it very hard to, to make chances against that. But he's side that has defended pretty well over the piece. Dow's clearance. It's bobbled off for a throw-in. Aberdeen themselves, still far from short of being safe. Fifth in the table, but with just six points between six teams, it is very tight. <laughs> the Firmin's win yesterday would have made all the others a little bit nervous. Kamara gets the throw. Which will be taken by Tom Boyd. Seven years with Celtic now. Had a short stint with Chelsea in England. Reset. Jonathan Gould, who's kept five clean sheets in the last seven games. On by Viduka. Larson has Blinker with him. Reggie Blinker off the post. But it's plumped in. Well, he did ever so well to win the aerial ball in the first place to knock it into the dangerous area. He out jumps Gary Smith, gets a great touch on it. Larson puts Blinker away, and Viduka following up to get on the end of the rebound off the post. Larson does well here to hold off Perry. Knocks it in front of Blinker, that's a good effort from Blinker. And the way things are going at the moment, no real surprise that it broke to Marco Viduka. Gets the first touch, Larson uses his body strength. Delightful ball to put Blinker in. Couldn't have broken any more kindly for Marco Viduca than it did. That'll be four goals in two games then. For Viduca, Celtic with an early second half strike. Wynes. Jonathan Gould. 
Aberdeen so nearly responding here's Burley Kinley Magnificent save from Jonathan Goldis Vida reset, felt he was being pushed there by Winters Winter did well to power the header down away and Gould, who hasn't really been involved, reacted ever so well. Paduka is on a hat-trick now. <laughs> and the Celtic fans are loving this. And he's still not as sharp as he wants to be, Mark Paduka. And he settles for the corner. So Paduka's on a hat-trick. He's having a dream start to his Celtic career. Once it finally got going, that is. Blinkers corner. Away by Smith. Winters. Blinker, who came to Celtic as part of the deal that took Paramo Canio to Sheffield Wednesday. This is to be a happier night for him here than it was in August when he scored an own goal. Frank's gone up for offside. Yeah, the second goal makes all the difference here and it really does take the pressure off. 1-0, never enough of a lead. And you always feel you're walking a tightrope in many respects, but the second goal will have a big difference to the contents of this Celtic side and it means that this man here can relax a bit Blinka Burr, uh, Lambert McKinley was closed down by Hart two attempts two on target, two goals not a bad evening's work so far. Now's header. Celtic's throw. Celtic, of course, still involved in the Scottish Cup as well, with a semi-final to come against Air or Dundee United. Dean's interest in both cup competitions ended rather early. Beaten by Livingston in the Scottish Cup and by Hibs in the League Cup. Lambert, McKinley in space, which is quickly closed down. Blinker, Burley, McKinley, away by Gary Smith. Here's Lambert, though. Albi up towards Viduka. He was strangely unmarked. Now Winters. Can Aberdeen bite back? Winters eventually fouled by it. Reset. Yeah, he was hauled back there. It's so difficult to defend against Winters because he, he turns so quickly. Play again. We need one quickly to get back into this. They're standing over the free kick. The wall has not gone back yet. There it goes. Willie Young wasn't ready for it. He is, and Jess will send it in, and Winters is in there. Oh, and it's bubbled just wide. It's a glorious chance, and what a good ball it is in here from Eon Jess. That's a superb free kick. And Winters should have done better. He's unlucky, but he really should have done better. He has to hit the target. When you're 2-0 down, you really have to make the most of that kind of opportunity. He was under a bit of pressure, but he should have done better than that. Reset just doing enough to put him off. Paul Hegarty can't believe it. 
Pachuca wasn't quite sure where it had landed. Still he actually came off his own man, so he had to do that. Here's Jess. Lambert. Aberdeen can sort things out and get a grip here. Well, only their fourth away win of the season in the Scottish Premier League. Derek White. Dow. Dean's midfield decimated by a flu burger course tonight. With the German Andreas Mayer and Paul Bernard and Darren Young all suffering. Mialbi. Viduka. Winus. It's easy for Mialbi. Lambert under pressure from Jess prodded it straight at Buchan. Perry. Winters, but there is Mialbi, and here is Viduka. Jess is header, Dow for Wyness. Dow gets it back, and now here's Wyness. Can he deliver? Not really. They'll have to do better than that. There's plenty of time and plenty of space the youngster to throw in a good ball. Bobby Winters is coming in from the back post. You can see the frustration on Paul Hegarty's face now. And as I say, they're right up against it. Cannon off the Duca towards Blinker. with Stephen Mahi putting a muscle in Monday night's cup game at Morton very early on in that game in fact McKinley came on for him Boyd McNamara making positive progress Henrik Larsson Craig Burley poor centre though from Burley Lambert, Newell about to get stuck into him, reset, that's an awkward one for Derek White, he dealt with it in the end. That's just such a physical presence now with Celtic played forward, Viduka, people were holding off. One or two defenders at a time. They played him well in the first half, but the physical battle, I think, has now been won by the Australian. Well, here he is for Duca. He's on a hat trick. But it wasn't coming then. Well, you can see what he had in his mind. He was just trying to curl it away into the top left hand corner. Wasn't going for power here. Looks up, tries to pick his spot, can't keep it down. But an indication of the confidence of this man now. Well, it's pretty close as far as attempts at goal are concerned. And even closer as far as on target if it's a concern. But the vital statistic is the scoreline. 2 0 in Celtic's favour. That man getting both, Mark Paduka. Here's Newell. And Winters. And back here for Bucken. And offside against Winters, but it's saved anyway. By Jonathan Gould, that quickly went up though. Well, Winters has found it hard to, to find any space in the area. He finds it here and it's a good layoff. What's the chance for the, the first time shot here as it comes back in? Winters is clearly offside. So is Wyness on this near side. Oh. 
Boyd. The Duca. Jess. Can't stop him. The Duca wants the ball now. He's starting to show off. The Duca. Here's McNamara. Duker again, picking out Blinker, Blinker's cross, Larson this time, oh, and it's wide, and he'd have banked on that being number 34 of the season. Yeah, you certainly would, should have made that count, it's a good ball in by Blinker as Mark Perry stands off him, Larson should have put the target and he knows it, it's a glorious chance for him, Perry gives Blinker too much space here to throw the ball in, Larson on Mark, still he is, you see, can it? completely annoyed that the space he was allowed it was a necklace knew that the third goal there and it was all over always thought he was a poor finisher <laughs> Larson's found Burley now and Burley looking for Maduka who just failed to make contact with Aberdeen are being ripped open at the moment Blinker Jess didn't go out but here's Burley and he's going to size one up Burley into the midriff of Stilly. Uh, Stilly did well because it was a, one that he could have spilled. He'd got to clutch it into his body. Here's Lambert. Larson on the chase for this one, but Derek Stilly saw it coming. Lambert going toe to toe with Jess and that's what all Paul Lambert will want to do now just make sure that Jess doesn't start to run the show or do anything that might bring Aberdeen back into this he says that that one away Lambert Henry Glasson he scored Awesome 27 goals in his last 18 games. Should have been 28 in 19. He's now headed wide. Now Aberdeen to give it a go with Dennis Wyness. And surely fouled by McNamara. The referees let the advantage go. Jess. Away by Mialbi though. White header. Buckham. <laughs> Aberdeen got a little sloppy then, and they've conceded a throw, but to Woody Young. He's just going to have a word with McNamara as a result of that earlier challenge. I don't know why he didn't give the free kick because there wasn't much of an advantage in it for, for Aberdeen to let the play go. Still working his ear there. And Aberdeen would be quite happy to take a free kick in this, what clearly is a dangerous area. Willie Young chose to allow the advantage. And Norwegian reset. Giving Larson a bit to do on that one. Here's Dow. Met by Lambert. Namara slid in. The beneficiary is Henrik Larsson. Now Burley. Looking to get away from White. And Stilly is just going to beat Viduka to it. Yeah, Derek White did well there. It's one of the few occasions that we've actually seen Craig Burley getting forward into the box. He's been very quiet so far. Little nutmeg there. I thought he was away from Derek White. And the defender did well. Dow. His first touch was almost his last. And his Wyness didn't keep that in. It'll be a Celtic throw. And it's the two goal hero 
over Duca. Now Lambert. Duca, Lambert, assisted by McNamara. And McNamara, beat down to it, but it'll be an Aberdeen throw. Yeah, Celtic first to everything right now. Aberdeen looking a bit demoralised. They have to pick it up, there's not a lot of time left to get back into this game. Winter's header. And here he is again. Now fucking. Perry. Hart. Up to Winters. And Winters. He's always stumbling a little bit. He's got the corner. There's a crucial intervention by Lambert, though, who once again was there to hoover up. Winters does well here to, to turn reset, but look at Lambert's contribution. Chess's corner, and it might come here for Hart. Maybe blocked by Lambert again. They're going to make a double change in a moment, but they'll wait and see what happens here. Smith offside against Newell, who had strayed. And that might well be his last business in this game. Yeah, it's been a frustrating night for Mike Newell. He's already had that yellow card uh, as well. He's treading in thin ice, so no real surprise that he's one of the two coming off. Just yet, though. Nigel Pepper and Alex Notman will come on for Aberdeen. And it'll happen before this throw in. So, Mike Newell and Jamie Buckin are making way. Newell's got a very long walk all across the field. He's going to be replaced by Alex Notman, who's on loan from Manchester United, one of the Fergie fledglings. Jamie Buckingham's place will be taken by Nigel Pepper sometime earlier this season from Bradford City. So a double change from Aberdeen with Bucket and Newell making way for Pepper and this young man, Alex Notman, scored 15 goals for Manchester United Reserves this season on loan for the rest of the campaign to Aberdeen and Nigel Pepper also joining the action. Here's Andy Dow. Here's Mialbi. Blinker. McKinley. approach from Celtic, here's Larson. Pepper gets his first touch and gives Notman his first touch. Trying to put Winters away. It's banged towards Blinker by Risa, but it was always going out. Winters. Throw in. Anderson 
making his 86th appearance for Celtic this evening. He's only got 52 goals. Here's Blinker. Burley, it's a bit like a stroll in the park on a Sunday evening at the moment. Yeah, they'll just keep it now. They, they don't have to go anywhere. Most of the hard work has already been done. And I fancy this free kick for Perry's challenge. Yeah, but look at the sandwich between Gary Smith and Mark Perry. And a couple of options here, Larson's over it. Probably will fancy it getting a, a strike on target as well. Celtic leading by two goals to nil and in with a chance of another and it's going to be Henrik Larsson pushed behind by Stilly super save it certainly is Ian because Larsson couldn't have hit it any better than he did it's up over the wall it's going away from Derek Stilly that's a magnificent save in comes another cross now it's a goal for Henrik Larsson. He was not to be denied after all. It's number 34 of the season for the Super Swede. And it's 3-0. Well, he's been too quiet, hasn't he? Missed a glorious chance earlier on to get his name on the score sheet. Good ball in from Tosh McKinley. It's swinging away from Derek Stilley. There's plenty of power on the header. Good ball in from Tosh McKinley. And Larsson gets up well. And Stilley, who had done so well just a few seconds earlier, left without a hope there. He does get up well, he's not the tallest, his timing is exceptional. He planted a header wide not so long ago, and obviously took it rather personally. 34 goals in 38 games this season, says it all really, but it's not only the goals that say it, there's a lot more about it than scoring. Celtic head towards their 100th league victory over Aberdeen. When you think as well that Henrik Larsson only cost £650,000. Yeah, it's a remarkable signing. Great piece of business from Vim Janssen. He was over in Glasgow this week and saying he wasn't surprised at all that Larsson had turned into such a hero here in Glasgow. Here's McNamara, and that's actually gone off Larson. Well, his timing's exceptional there. Mark Perry can't get to him quickly enough. But the timing is perfect, and there's plenty on it. He's scored in seven games against Aberdeen, seven goals in seven games. He's got a similar record against everybody. McKinley provided the cross for Larson's goal. And a touching challenge by Nigel Pepper on Reggie Blinker. And this is going to be a card for which colour? <laughs> Pepper. It's a red card. He really crunched in there, Nigel Pepper, having only just come on as a substitute. He's quickly off. Yeah, I'm not surprised, Dean. I don't know what possessed him there. It's frustrating when you're playing against a side that are keeping the ball and just knocking it about. I can have no complaints at all. Well, Young couldn't be better positioned to give the decision. two red cards in this fixture back in August has to bring it out again and Nigel Pepper only lasted a few minutes on the field they've picked up the bits of Reggie Blinken put him back together again Larson 
Burnley, you fancy Celtic maybe to get a few more, and they certainly fancy it at the moment. Burnley, and here's Larson! It's his second of the game. Two for Viduka, two for Larson. Lethal. Beautiful delivery from Burnley. That's into such a dangerous area. Derek Stiller can't really come for that. He's too deep. And Larson's in there above Gary Smith. Burnley not closed down. Time to measure the cross. And Larson does exactly what he did a few moments ago. Powers the header downwards. That's a smashing header. That'll be number 35 then. away Celtic will move back within 10 points of Rangers but really might be left ruining some of the dodgy results they had in the early part of the season well Larson and the Duke are both on a hatchet and it's one way traffic at the moment Blinker offside flash gone up I believe they'll be rather pleased yeah I think they'll be quite Gladly hear the full time whistle right now. You have to hand it to Celtic. They were under a fair bit of pressure. Rangers up the ante again yesterday by going 13 clear. And Celtic know that one slip up when this championship race is over. And we've answered a few questions once again here tonight. Well, they've got another testing trip next week to Kilmarnock. We'll be there with them on Sky Sports. Rangers are home to Dundee United. Dow. White clearance. But here's Burley. White read that one. Winters. Here's Notman, who been desperate to get a chance for Aberdeen. A little moan that he's been left on the bench since joining on loan from Manchester United. That's a goal kick. So a disappointing day for Paul Hegarty. And it's going to be a nervous end of the season for him and a few more managers in the Scottish Premier League. Yeah, they had done well in that first half as well. Joseph Engloss knows that uh, this one's well and truly over. But Aberdeen did well in the first half. Had they got the penalty, the contentious handball from Yalbe, you never know. But you have to hand it to Celtic. They really have up to gear in the second half. Celtic have now scored 66 goals in the league three more than Rangers I'm sure the Rangers fans will say you can score as many goals as you like still a few points behind Dow Reset keeping a check on this one no oh, he's prodded that one out of play accepted Notman Wynas chance behind for a corner by Jackie McNamara what Paul Hegarty can do now Chess's corner, away by Recep, and Larson's going to latch onto this. Blinker, back to Larson, he's away. Is there any catching him? No, oh, it's just run away, and Smith came across to block it. Great exchange there between Larson and Blinker. Blinker sends Larson away, and Gary Smith made up an awful lot of ground to make the challenge. Tom Boyd. 
looking to put McNamara in, but across came White. And Winters took it away from Lambert. Still Winters goes, it's a magnificent run, and it's a superb solo strike from Robbie Winters. Well, if there is such a thing as consolation at this stage, this is it. A wonderful goal here from Winters. Runs directly at reset. And he's quick enough to get away from him. Still a lot of work to be done. McKinley slides in. And what a good finish from Robbie Winters. Comes on to his right side. Tosh McKinley can't make the challenge. And he just strokes it away from Jonathan Gould. Fabulous goal from Robbie Winters on a night of real frustration for him. Tremendously taken. It might be scant consolation for Aberdeen, but what a goal. Here's Larson. Didn't know that Wyness was coming in. Hart. Perry. Aberdeen down to ten men with Nigel Pepper dismissed. He only joined us for a brief spell as a substitute. Jess. Now Dow. Namara Boyd Burley McNamara holds it up for Burley Mialbi to McKinley but across to Boyd. Inside the final ten minutes of the game. Here's Burley. Smith for Wyness. Flawed by Reset. Alex Notman, just 19 years of age. On loan from Manchester United, but only managed a fleeting substitute appearance for them this season. At Tottenham in the Worthington Cup. There he is, flicking on, but straight through. Now Winters is on side, but there's no one in the middle for him. Yeah, he needed some support there, Celtic. A bit of slackness creeping in at the back there. Got out with the ball in behind, and Winters had made a, a good run into the inside right channel. Appeals for offside, but I think he was well on when the ball was played. Was looking for some support that wasn't there. Wyness, Burley steps in, and he's gone for goal himself! Swing drive from Craig Burley. Yeah, not a bad effort. Plenty of space in front of him, had time to set himself. He thought, why not? Well, I'm sure Aberdeen will be glad to see the back of Mark Paduka, who's scored two of Celtic's four tonight. But they won't be overly impressed at the sights of the teenage whiz kid, Mark Birchall, coming on in his place. Virtual 18 years of age, five goals to his name this season. Spent most of it on the bench. He has, however, signed a new long-term contract with Celtic. Lee 
Rangers win over Motherwell yesterday. Asked a few questions of Celtic today. And once again, they've come up with the answers. All they can do is keep winning. And hoping that Rangers slip up. Burley. Burley being hassled by Jess. They got out of it rather well. Johan Mialbi. Tosh McKinley. Larson. Aberdeen now have the worst defence in the Scottish Premier League. 47 conceded. It was the second worst before this match began. Behind Dundee. to possession almost as a damage limitation exercise not really going anywhere at the moment and Burley's challenge has put Burchard away Terry is covering the Kinley's header he did it to himself Lambert Damara. Lambert for Boyd. Here's Larson. And still. And goal kick. Yeah, Celtic keeping possession so well now. We think the Aberdeen lad will just want to get into the bath. Not pleasant when you can't get the ball. Tuesday night we'll have highlights of the delayed FA Cup quarter-final between Barnsley and Tottenham from Oakwell. Snowed off a week ago Saturday. Tuesday at 10, highlights on Sky Sports 3. Another good day's work from Tom Boyd and from Celtic. They won't give up on the title until they have to. I think you have to feel sorry for Paul Hegarty as well. He probably knows the changes he would like to make ideally, but hasn't been given the job on a permanent basis and he really has to make do with what he has at the moment. It's not the easiest situations to be in as a manager. the battle with Notman. Here's McNamara. Now Burley blinkers in lots of space and that's where it's going to. Terry though is quickly out there. Kinley with a throw when he feels like it. Mialbi. Flipped on by Larson. Smith's header. Perry. He's got the goal kick. Yeah, Butchell prepared to chase it uh, as you would imagine. He he would, he's still fresh. Plenty of life left in those young legs of his. Celtic just seeing this one out now. Jonathan Gould was only the fourth Celtic have conceded in their last nine games.
sent into touch by Gary Smith. Celtic will have won 12 of their last 14 league meetings with Aberdeen. Brinker now through, offside flag is up. And Celtic threatened a fifth through the sub. But yeah, the flag was up early on the, the stand side. Nice little ball threaded through by Blinker, but Butchell had straight a yard or two offside. McNamara, Virchel, Burley and Larson are in the box at the moment. Virchel's cross fights Burley! It's number five! It's convincing yet again from Celtic. All they can do is keep winning. That's just what they're doing. Yeah, it's no bad sign either if this man is popping up in the box at this late stage in the game. Still short of fitness, but still prepared to get forward. That's not an easy one to hit first time. He was being shot down here by Gary Smith as the ball comes in. And that's a good first time effort, pulling it away from Derek Stilley. Good ball in from Mark Burchill, but not an easy one to hit. And he made a good job of it. Celtic have not lost a league match in which Craig Burley has scored incredibly. He's netted in 13 league games overall. And they've actually won 12 of them, including this game today. We were telling Craig Burley about that amazing statistic before the game. Told him to get a goal, but he left it rather late. <laughs> Here's Notman. The RB covering. Celtic hitting the high fives. Yeah, it didn't look like a 5-1 in the first half. Celtic were finding it difficult. And then Marco Viduca came up with it, the crucial first goal. It doesn't help when Nigel Pepper can only stay on for six minutes. Aberdeen would quite like the whistle to go, but it's not happening yet. Here's the boy Burley, finding the boy Blinker. I do believe Celtic are in the mood for number six. The man of the match today, David? Marco Viduca has to be. I can't get used to calling him Mark, but... He popped up with the first goal when Celtic, as I said, were struggling. He's shown that uh, physical presence that he has tonight. And he can only get fitter and only get better as, as well. And that must be reassuring for Joseph Wenglos. Marco Viduca is my Bank of Scotland man of the match. And the Celtic fans have rather enjoyed their trip to the northeast of Scotland. It ends in a 5 1 win for Dr. Joe Wenglos' Celtic. Henrik Larsson tormented them as he has tormented every other team this season. Larsson got two to add to Viduka's two and Craig Burley rounded it all off in the last minute. Reggie Blinker's corner headed home by Viduka for the opener. Aberdeen gave it a go in the first half but when Reggie Blinker's shot came back off the post who was there? Yes, Viduka. Tosh McKinley's cross was headed home by Henrik Larsson after he'd earlier glanced one horribly wide. And then Larsson pounced again for his 35th of the season. But how about this from Robbie Winters? A rampaging run. A goal of real class. But it was the perfect end to a perfect night when Craig Burley popped up to score number five. Celtic are back within 10 points of Rangers at the top of the table. Full-time at Pitodri, Aberdeen 1, Celtic 5.